Hey, good morning, afternoon. Super early morning, I guess, depending on where you're at. Um, thanks for being here today. All right, so. Still a little bit of technical difficulties here this morning, but we're getting closer. We're actually in the studio now, so. Um, yeah, getting closer to being grounded in here. Well, hey guys, got some phenomenal peeps on here with us this morning. Thank you guys for all being here. Leon, Chris, Stephanie, Kendall. Uh, yeah, that is Chris Martell, Leon. <laughs> Good to see you guys here. All right. And from Hawaii. Fantastic. Okay, well, I suppose let's start with some breaths. Albuquerque, Helena, Montana. Fantastic. All right. So hopefully my connection is okay. It might pause and freeze up on us here. <sighs> All right, so let's take some breaths. So just imagine your physical heart within your heart is your light, your soul's fire. Just imagining going heart to heart with the earth, connecting heart to heart, breathing in that light of the earth, up through the feet and right into the heart. Grounding our entire being in with the earth. Next, we'll connect to source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that, breathing in that energy of creation into the heart. And a third breath, breathing in both earth and sky. As those lights come in together, it mixes with your light, your heart expands and allows your soul to step more fully into you. So just holding this space, going to hold that chalice energy there for all souls and all humans to bring in and hold on to that chalice energy that crystal clear, pure consciousness light. Awesome. All right. That's how we make changes by doing absolutely nothing. Holding that energy and watch reality shift around us. Pretty amazing. Okay. So um didn't have any email questions so we won't cover any email questions um let me just check see if there's anything last minute that did come in possibly um so one of the questions from john here um who couldn't make the fifth question friday but um he purchased a, um, a Safe and Sound Pro 2 broadband RF meter. So um, John was wondering why the, the meter, his, his um, EMF meter is not picking up the changes in EMFs like from your cell phone. Um, because we are not working at blocking any electromagnetics at all. So this is the physical universe we live in. Everything is electromagnetic, all physical matter. Our heart is that electromagnetic generator. We are in an electromagnetic world, um, this physical world. So we're not trying to block anything. We are trying to take disharmonious electromagnetics, such as from man-made devices, electrical, um, your electrical outlets, your meters, things like that. And we're using the tensor fields to harmonize those electromagnetic fields. So in all reality, if you're using an EMF meter, 
you may find that your uh, the electromagnetic field coming out of like let's say your electrical panel your fuse panel is about five and a half to six feet that's where you really notice that the edge of that huge electromagnetic field with your meter now if you put a golden fire disc onto that electrical panel you should actually be able to pick up that electromagnetic field farther because as the ring and as the tensor fields harmonize that electromagnetic field that electromagnetic field becomes more expansive so if anything um, it should show when you're testing for with an emf meter onto your electrical panel you put a ring on it it should actually show that that field is extends farther because it is now harmonized um, so really the only way that you can use any kind of tool device to test what the rings are truly doing is um, for for the person would be biofeedback um, and kinesiology muscle testing is another great way you can go to most of your good chiropractors and they they are they've actually gone and gone to school and certified in kinesiology i'm pretty sure you get certified kinesiology muscle testing um so basically it's a lot of times they'll use your arm and it's like a strength test or if you're laying down they'll use your leg as a strength test um there's a lot of different ways balance tests i don't really trust balance tests those are unconsciously influenceable i feel but actual muscle testing kinesiology it's 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 a pretty well um uh it's, it's a pretty valid um tool to use kinesiology so basically it is is the biofeedback on how it affects us it is about the only way you can really test <clears throat> so we've done cell phone tab studies um, on biofeedback and how it aligns chakras energy bodies makes organs function better clears the emotional field clears the mental field things like that and that's just from you know like i say biofeedback so anyway that's the one question that we had on the email um some other questions and please do if you're live here with us today which thank you guys so much for being here um, be sure to put your questions over here in the questions tab so I can find them easy enough. Um, just seeing who's all here. Thank you guys for all being here. All right. So, uh oh. <laughs> We got kicked out there for a second. <laughs> All right. So um, I'll go through and start answering some questions. But in all actuality, before I get into questions, um, I would like to um, share some of the new stuff, an energy update, if you will. Um, I know we talked last week, and, and I told you some of the things that we were seeing as like <laughs> all consciousness being at this in between space it was really interesting yesterday i was doing a reading with with brenda um i happen to be parked in uh <laughs> let me back up this week has been really a shit week <laughs> i had such a rough time this week um everything just feeling a disconnection the first few days it was just super fogginess you know like monday tuesday Wednesday, Thursday, it was just, you know, disconnection, just really, you know, my daughter asked me, hey, what was the good thing that happened today? I was like, oh, crap, really? I can't even think of anything. It's just been one of those days. And um, it took until I went into Walmart last night, yesterday afternoon, and it took actually walking into the store, which usually has the opposite effect on me. I started to actually feel good. And by the time I got out is when... Um, I sat in the parking lot and did a reading on the new pendant, um, which has the chalice ring and the harmonizer ring. And by the way, you can now get the harmonizer rings on the two inch ones on our harmonizer ring webpage. So the, the difference in these, one of them is the harmonizer ring two inch. It's this thicker gauge one. 
The thinner gauge one is the harmonizer ring pendant. So the reason that we have these two, the thicker and the thinner, is, well, the thicker ones, if you're just using a standalone ring, um, you know, carry it in your pocket, doing work with it on the body, um, whatever, this heavier ring, it just it feels good. Um, it feels good in the physical. This lighter ring, we wanted to make this lighter ring as a way to aesthetically blend with the chalice ring, the smaller one. So these two are the same twist, the same gauge. When we added this heavier gauge ring to it, um, at the time it just didn't look right, but this one didn't look right until we actually anchored in everything into this ring, which I look forward to talk to you about. Um, so anyway, the harmonizer rings, you can find these two inch rings there now. But um, we were doing a reading yesterday, as I was saying, in the parking lot and I was on the phone with Brenda. And I was talking to you about last week about how whatever it was that she's channeling herself now and that she channeled that in as I was holding space was so flipping phenomenal last week. And then this week it was even more phenomenal. Um, and I was actually stopped and while they were there, they as in asked who they were and it was basically, we have no name. We are every aspect of Brenda throughout all time. Um, it was just kind of interesting. It was bigger than her soul. It was bigger than her. Um, so anyway, I was asking, you know, about my own self because of this week and, and how it's been. And they basically said everything that I knew to be easy on yourself, that we are in the middle of a huge in between space that we're not able to embrace the new yet we are still getting rid of the old we're still doing the clearing work and then listen to our friend Jeanette uh, Crowley last night got the same messages that um, you know be easy on yourself right now that we are in that in-between space um, we're, we're in that transition space like I mentioned last week it was like uh, that whole collective consciousness it's like a ball of ants in water, you know, they all cling together and we're just moving through this dense space. And I could see where we pop out in this blue sky space and then we can just expand and be, and just be um, in a whole new space. And truly is that's, that's where we're at, you guys. So, you know, a lot of people are still having, you know, the stomach stuff, aches and pains, um, disconnection, loss of passions, it's okay. We are in the birth canal, truly this time. You know, people have talked about us being birthed into a new world and oh my goodness, I think this is the, the proverbial birth canal right now. Anyway, um, all right. And again, please do keep your questions on the questions tab if you can, just so that I can be sure to find them and, and uh, do my best to, to answer. But then again, we have some pretty phenomenal people on chat, so you're welcome to ask questions on chat. And I know we have some, some great folks here who can assist with answering a lot of these questions. Um, let's see, so I'll just keep talking a little bit more. Gosh, I see our connection keeps going in and out. Hopefully we Stay on connect. Oops, pardon me. Potential spam is calling. It's probably the feds investigating my social security number again or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Get a lot of wild spam calls these days. Um, anyway, new tools. So, of course, we have the Divine I Am Taurus. This is a prototype. The this is my prototype. Um, the center ring is actually a looser twist. You can see the pictures on the on the Divine I Am Taurus page. Okay, so um, I know somebody mentioned about this harmonizer ring. I'm going to do a video this weekend. 
and teach you how to take the nine and a half inch harmonizer ring and bend it into a collar ring, which is just better contoured to fit. So anyway, I'll do a little video this weekend, maybe a Facebook Live or maybe YouTube, I'm not sure what, um, and just teach you how to bend this nine and a half inch harmonizer ring into a collar ring, which um, I, I, I like the collar ring a lot. Um, somebody's asking, can I use it to relax and meditate? You can. Um, the harmonizer ring, it is one that is, it's one of those higher, higher connecting rings. To me, I see this harmonizer as, it's hard to say even a bridge, but it is, it, it contains both the, the energetics of the chalice ring as well as everything within this physical electromagnetic world. So to me, it's kind of like a blender that you put in all this physical world stuff, electromagnetic stuff, consciousness, um, emotions, your crap, everything comes into here. And then that chalice energy comes in and it agitates everything and clears it. Um, you know, the harmonizer ring is a good one for working with the physical, for clearing out things that are stuck within the dense physical. And actually, this harmonizer ring is going to be one that we're going to add at some point in time. We'd like to add them to all of the pyramids. And this one, this is the one I had strapped on the back of my motorcycle when I went to Daytona. I just tried to polish it up yesterday. Boy, copper and salt water don't mix very well. Um, but yeah, we want to add this harmonizer ring to to the pyramids because it's it's just bringing things more into the physical. Um, a lot of us have been playing with these harmonizer rings, sleeping with them, things like that. They're um, again very much on the physical, so the pendant. Um, the harmonizer ring as a pendant is pretty phenomenal, but when we add it to this chalice ring, it does something more. So I have a goofy name for this. So when I was asking last night too, yesterday about when I was talking to Brenda and I was asking about names, you know, I was like, well, what are we going to call this thing? Because before we were going to call it the combo pendant because um, we didn't have a name for it. And, you know, and, and plus this really wasn't, the the pendant i was kind of hesitant on even releasing it i was like oh there's gotta be something cooler well we made something cooler out of this pendant we took this wonderful super spendy divine i am activator pendant is now this so this pendant you can find just now i made it live on the website and it's on sale um you save like three dollars by buying it by the package um but this one is called the binary infusion pendant so the binary infusion pendant is bringing through everything that the divine i am activator pendant is for 58 bucks um pretty phenomenal you know, especially with the readings that, that we got on it. And I'll be adding more content to, to that page at some point in time. But right now, you can still find it on that binary infusion. Um, because they just said, well, we need a name that stands out. Um, and after we anchored in that Divine I Am activator into this pendant, um, it was pretty amazing because I was actually just holding the rings in my hand. And for five minutes as we were doing that channel, as soon as we were done, this whole half of my body just, it felt different. I could feel every cell in my body. Um, they were, it was all fuzzy, vibrating. Um, I got all spacey, holding space when we were doing this thing with Brenda. Um, it was just such a high, high field. But yeah, the energetics of this ring shifted a lot. So um i was playing to try to figure out how to weave it on and i just did this weave pattern to hold it there 
But again, um, if you already have a chalice ring pendant, that's why we made um, this two inch pendant ring available on that harmonizer ring page. So if you have a chalice ring pendant, I would sure suggest getting that harmonizer ring, putting them together, and you will have that divine I am activator. Um, but yeah, hey, cool. Thanks, Chris. I glad you like the name there for <laughs> for that because, like I say, they just said to find a name that stands out, and they were trying to pick into Brenda's brain and find a word. The best they could come up with was dual. But so then after I started looking into it and feeling into it, binary was kind of an interesting synonym there for dual in that it is all things that can be separated, um, you know, into two. And the infusion was simply, um, it's kind of like infusion is basically taking all those energies, putting it into like a liquid structure or into a liquid matrix, which I would consider the chalice. And so to me, it's bringing everything that we are on the physical, mental, emotional, the soul, the electromagnetic being, all of it, bringing it all together with that chalice energy and steeping it. And when you're bringing things together with this chalice energy, this chalice energy is, it's, it's clearing creation. It's, it's clearing miscreations. Um, so again, when we're doing healing work, we're not seeing that it's, healing something rather it is going to the original source of the creation of this whether it's lifetimes ago or an energetic blockage or whatever it is it's clearing it it is it's dissolving it it is making it disappear from creation um pretty phenomenal stuff working with this new chalice energy and that harmonizer just makes it all work more tangibly here on the physical um all right so i'm gonna get over to the questions here and check and see what's happening well it says we keep popping in and out here so hopefully we're not breaking up too bad all right so let's start here Linda's asks, what would be an appropriate item or items to hang from a baby crib mobile? Um, you know, for, for working with the infants and toddlers, I suggest the golden fire generator. Um, the golden fire generator is one that is going to keep, a, it's going to transform a lot of those frequencies and things that kids are susceptible to seeing and attuned to like ghosts. Um, other things in those higher unseen energy frequencies can affect kids a lot. So the golden fire generator is one that I would suggest to have, you know, anywhere where you have an infant or a toddler. Now, um, because of the copper, don't allow an infant toddler to chew on the copper because they can ingest too much copper orally. So just don't have it to where they can actually, you know, have it in their grasp to where they would actually put it in their mouths because you can get too much copper orally. Um, Leon, I've been wearing the cosmic sun disc with a chalice ring. It's unlike any energy I've worked with to date. How do you see the regeneration and chalice energy working together? Um, to tell you the truth, uh, Leon, we've I've been drawn to mainly put the um, chalice energy into the regeneration rings. You can put the chalice energy into any of the tensor rings, but the regeneration are the ones that that have been mostly all traditionally using. Um, so the chalice energy and working with any of the tensor tools um, is pretty amazing. And so, yeah, so like, I, like I've said before, since March 1st, any of the rings that we've created, that we've twisted the wire since March 1st, 
will have that chalice energy underlying them. It'll be infused within the crystal structure of every one of the tools that's been produced since March 1st. Um, so that chalice energy, I can't say exactly how it works with each of the frequencies, but I do notice that it is working. You can feel a difference, let's put it that way, with any of the tools that you're using that chalice energy with. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate the observations there, Leon. And, um, you know, as always, we love it when you guys are able to share your observations through the website, through um, testimonials. Um, because a lot of people read the testimonials and discover different ways that people are using them. And then also when you share your observations with, with everybody, it opens them up. Like I have a gentleman who is starting to work with the tools with sound. I know we talked about that last week too, and I'm highly encouraging him to get on and write testimonials for what his perspective is when using the tools on how it shifts sound. So that way other people who read that can then have that seed of awareness planted within them and opens up that possibilities to being aware of those kind of frequencies, sound, and being more aware of, of sounds, um, you know, on uh, because sounds are, yeah, I won't even get in. I'll just stop right there before we go on any other tangents. Um, April, just received my quantum grid point. Could you talk about it? Yes, so the quantum grid points, um, hmm. I love putting a harmonizer ring around the quantum grid point, that's for sure. So the quantum grid points are ones that will expand to about the size of the home. Um, you know, the quantum grid points are, they're, they're creating a sacred space. It's, it's kind of like having a tensor field generator, like a golden fire generator in your home, except for it doesn't expand, you know, for those miles, it just covers the size of the home. But it is going to be bringing through that energetics of the golden fire. So it's going to be working just like the generators um, for clearing dense consciousness, um, for working with EMFs. But it's, it's doing more than that in that it is creating sacred space. And so within that space, when you set your quantum grid point, have an intention of what you want that to do for you, what kind of space you want that to hold, what kind of... Um, and what I mean by what kind of space, the flavor of your space would be basically like an intention of creating a healing space or a space of rejuvenation or higher connection. Um, you know, whatever it is that you are striving for and using the tools, you can put that intention when you set that quantum grid point in your home, in your altar, on your car dash, wherever. When you set it there, have that intention of what you want it to bring through for you. Um, and then please do check out the, the product webinar on it too, because we go a lot more in depth there on, you know, how to, to use multiple ones to create grids, um, things like that. Um, and so the quantum grid points are pretty phenomenal little critters for sure. Uh, Brad's asking, how can we deal with all the EMFs, especially at night? They're turning it up at night to disturb our sleep and gives me a bad headache. I live in an apartment, which makes it much more intense. So when to deal with EMFs would be the any of the tools that work through the environment, like the quantum grid point we were just talking about. Of course, this is the newest tool that's working within the environment, um, the divine I am Taurus. But the quantum grid point would be the most economical, but otherwise I would almost suggest going with the golden fire generator um, for you, Brad. And we do have that smaller two and a half inch one, which is the most economical. Um, that one covers the two and a half mile area. Now, it is a very interesting concept in how we as a human are made up of mind, body, spirit, and how we are powerful creators and when our mind and our experience is saying that oh my goodness this is bad i need to fear this this is terrible all this outside influence on me 
Um, it almost brings in that that you're almost it almost brings in that victim space um, of all that stuff that's bombarding me and affecting me. And the tools are phenomenal in that when you use the tools and you can utilize them to stand in your power and in your light that is truly what these tools are for is to help you stand in your power to where you know you are untouchable by any of that stuff on the outside that there's nothing out there astrology microwaves government propaganda whatever it is nothing can touch you because you are standing in your light and in your power that's what we want the tools to do in the meantime to help the mind allow the tools to do their work because that's the thing too is that we see a lot of people because we are powerful creators especially when we are up here in creation because we are influenced so much when our consciousness is in the head we're influenced by the emotions we're influenced by our beliefs by the programs that are instilled all the stuff so when we can step back into the heart by doing those three breaths come into the heart space grab your tool ask your tool to do the work of clearing all that stuff asking it just to clear it harmonize it do what it does to shift it to change it and when we can take an active role from the heart space and working with the mind and putting our intentions with that tool that helps us step out of that space to where we can allow the tools to actually do the work because we've seen quite a few people who get the tools and they call us up and says oh god damn it it's not working and i'm still suffering and all this stuff and it's getting me and zapping me and i have to spend time with them and get them in the heart and get them to stand more in their own power when they do they allow the tools to do the work otherwise we can override it um and it's 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 not that you're putting your faith into the tool we want you to be able to put your faith within yourself of being that untouchable being of light that you are that powerful creator what you're creating from here or here that you are and our creations from the heart override the creations from the head it is that much more powerful we are more in alignment um, anyway hopefully that helps kind of set the stage for how to work with that generator um what would you recommend to charge up the water in a hot tub ah uh, the golden fire gaia sphere is the five and a half inch gaia sphere is my absolute favorite tool for the water um it, it I, I take it to the hot springs to 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 my own bathtub um it is phenomenal if you but a more economical one would be the quantum grid point because those um they're made with echopoxy the plant-based resin they they won't dissolve in the water um they're sharp and pokey so you want to be careful where you put it in the pool or the hot tub so you don't step on it or sit on it um but the quantum grid point is also another viable option um but i do love the um the golden fire generator or the golden fire sorry the golden fire gaia sphere the five and a half inch kendall will there be a silver harmonizer ring to go with the silver chalice ring pendant you know um kendall i really think that we do need to make one because we have the silver chalice ring and you're not the first one that's asked about that in the past 24 hours and i really do think that we're going to have to make the silver version of that just to go with this um and they look really cool. I meant to grab one of those this morning is a silver chalice ring and put that copper harmonizer ring over top of it. They look 
kind of cool together to the the two mix the two metals but um yes i do believe we're going to have to make this harmonizer ring in silver so that we can make that um that binary infusion pendant in silver as well so yes at some point we certainly will possibly next week um lois how would the cosmic sun disc or louise my my apologies there how would the cosmic sun disc compare to the divine i am taurus in a pyramid and how would how would it to be to use both how does the size of a torus affect the energy of the pyramid okay so with the the cosmic sun disc and the divine i am taurus are they're they're two pretty much completely different energies they they really are um they are still both working on the physical they're they're doing um you know they're bringing in more of that light to me, the cosmic sun disc was kind of the the stepping stone, the precursor to the divine I am Taurus. Um, as far as working with the divine I am Taurus in the pyramids, I really don't know. Who to me it feels really good adding it with the cosmic sun disc and of course that's the thing too about the pyramids is that they're designed specifically to be able to fit that eight and a half inch torus in here the cosmic sun disc so that it holds the legs apart at that right angle um so somebody has asked about what we're going to do about this new divine i am torus and how they can utilize the torus with the pyramid i don't have an answer for that yet other than to just simply slip it on top of your cosmic sun disc, like I just did. That's the first time I did, and it that does feel really good. Um, so comparing and how would how does the size of the torus affect the energy of a pyramid? And and in reality, um, we no longer are making that three inch cosmic sun disc just because they're paying the butt to make and we really didn't want to have to charge more for a pain in the butt fee to make those because Brenda's the one that has to make them all um these ones are a lot easier for her to put together so with that three inch sun disc if you happen to be one of the a lot of people that have those you can use that inside of the ascension pyramids in place of the eight and a half inch and energetically it's going to work just the same um so as far as the size of the torus it within the pyramid it's it's not really going to make a difference um and i am not sure about substituting i'm pretty sure that we can substitute the um, divine i am into a pyramid with that other torus energetically I believe that they're going to be working the same. Don't quote me on that. I'd like to look into that some more. But in an initial feels, yeah, that it should work just the same. Um, but the thing about the pyramids is that the pyramids are already bringing in more of that divine I am anyway. And so you really don't need to add this to change, change the energetics that much. Um, again, adding one of the harmonizer rings to a pyramid that you already have with the cosmic sun disc in it, such as that one, to me is pretty phenomenal. And again, you certainly can add the other tools in there. And yeah, that does do something more to it when you're adding that divine I am Taurus to there. Um, let's see, Renard, what would be the best tool or tools for astral traveling? So the um, the Gaia sphere, the regeneration Gaia, is one that will, if you ever are doing astral travel and you feel like you get stuck and can't make it back to your body, the Gaia sphere in the regeneration is the one that is making sure you get back in your body. But as far as doing the astral travel work, um, I don't know as if 
there is any one specific tool that would be better than the other um, for doing that work. I guess the the Taurus has come to mind, and I suppose the um, the Divine I Am Taurus. Um, you know, those ones come to mind, but really, it's to me, it's more about that's an internal working mechanism that um, the tools will just help us to to clear away to where we can better access that our own internal mechanism for doing the astral travel. So to me, the tool wouldn't be specifically one. I mean, this is just my initial thoughts on this, Renard, is that the tool wouldn't be the specific one to help us with the work or the astral travel, but the tools would be there to help us be able to facilitate within our own self. And I'm, I'm hoping you kind of catch my of what I'm trying to say with it. But yeah, the divine I am stuff. And I think you have a divine I am pendant, don't you, Renard? Oh yeah, you do. With a little copper piece in there. Um, and that's it too. If you guys have the divine I am activator pendant, the silver one, we have those little copper pieces of the harmonizer ring. It's a different size. So if you are wanting to add a harmonizer ring to your divine I am activator pendant, the standard two inch one does not fit with it. We actually have a custom ring that we don't have listed at the moment that goes inside of that pendant. Um, Chris, it feels like a birth canal. I think I popped my head out for a bit. When you say stomach stuff happening, are you referring to the stomach rising? So um, the stomach stuff that we've noted a lot of people have is um, is just it's been a nausea and not set upset stomach is is what a lot of people have had and you know when brenda looks at it she's not finding viruses or anything it's just been or bacteriological it's just been energy um you know my daughter is having it here recently too and um so that's what we've been noticing it's just whatever's going on with the energetic shifts and of course um too there's there was an interesting thing put out by Luna and joy you know, Luna Joy put out this whole thing about this the twenty the the the, was it, the thirteen moon calendar and the twenty days the twenty days in the Mayan calendar on how we started that on the fourteenth and supposedly there's going to be all of these big influxes of energy that's going to be working through the five chakra Mayan system and it's going to be doing a lot of shifting and changing to us as the mm, physical spacesuit. I was called the meat suit, but I think she called it the space suit, which I kind of like that one. Um, so anyway, Luna Joy talks a little bit about some of the things that are happening right now, too. You can find her on Facebook. Um, she's posted that quite a bit. Um, let's see. Will, and then April asked about the, um, the BIP to come in silver. Yes, and most definitely, I think we're going to have to make this one in silver, that binary infusion pendant. Um, let's see, Christine, will the infinite light pendant blend well in both size and energetics with the new combo pendant possibly sit inside of it? Um, you know, the infinite light pendant is actually the same size as the chalice ring. Um, and... Hey, look at that. I do have some of the tools. Oh, yeah. Isn't that pretty cool? Silver chalice with the copper on the outside. It will look cooler with the silver on both. So, let's see. The infinite light pendant. I don't really think that that ring that the infinite light pendant is is going to seat well physically with the... Um, the harmonizer or the chalice ring. Um, I think that with that infinite light pendant, yeah, I, I don't think that either one of these rings are going to um, nest with it very well. But the infinite light pendant, um, energetically, it's going to blend really well 
with, uh, with these ones for sure. Um, yeah, actually, infinite light pen is still a, it's still a pretty viable energy for sure. And just adding that chalice and that harmonizer, it's just going to be it's going to be more than just wearing it. It the the sum of those would be more than more than what the sum would really be. It's going to be greater than the sum when you add those together. Uh, let's see, and then. Sorry, I kind of got lost here in the questions. Okay, so Kareen, what would what would I use to keep me protected from radiation, cell phones, etc.? I have two of your twisted rings that wear my fingers and like the products. So really, when you have, um, if you're wearing the finger rings, that is going to be working with your entire field. So anything that is free floating through the air as it comes into your field, it is harmonized. So it'll be just like wearing a pendant if you're wearing the finger rings or a bracelet or a collar ring, however it is. Um, it will all work throughout your entire energy field and harmonize the things that come in. Now, like with your cell phone, when you have your cell phone and you're carrying it directly in your pocket and things like that, um, we still suggest then using a cell phone tab on it. Or like, let's say your your Wi-Fi router, if you're sitting right next to your Wi-Fi router and it's just sitting right here within three feet of you, then we still suggest putting, you know, a Wi-Fi ring or even better yet now, the two-inch harmonizer ring onto your Wi-Fi um, if you're right directly within that field. So, you know, if you're using your cell phone all the time, definitely a cell phone tab. Um, but then otherwise any of the rings or tools on your person is perfect let's see then cream's also also asking about the cost of the rings i'm wearing um so let's see the divine i am activator pennant these guys are 399 solid silver time energy materials the um the binary infusion pendant with the leather lanyard is uh they're normally 61 we're doing 58 so these ones are 58 right now the collar ring which is the nine and a half inch harmonizer ring these ones are 49 and again this is that little bit thicker gauge the eight gauge where then we go down to the two inch ring which is a 10 gauge and then we go to the pendant rings which are a 12 gauge so these are the lightest, the medium, and the heavier out of these three. All right. So Alfredo, hey Brian, I noticed the blue white light pyramid coming from the harmonizer ring. What would you say about the energy field and its output of energy versus the generator field? Okay, so within um, within the harmonizer ring they were seeing that there are these two pyramids that come out of here one of them is like a copper gold color energetic pyramid the other one is that bluish whitish one um, the field the, the air field that they produce can cover about the size of a room um, so you can set this harmonizer ring down and just with your intention when you set it down that it covers the room that pyramid will expand and cover the room um, so this is one of the one of the only rings that we have that will actually work outside of it well the everything ring is another one too the everything ring um, is another one that we talked about that you can with intention expand it out um, but the harmonizer ring too is one that when you set it in your space you can intend that it expands out and covers that room that you're in and it will it will hold and stay that way um so versus the tensor field generator um the the harmonizer ring is doing everything that the golden fire does it's not working with like the ghost waywards as much as the golden fire does but as far as emfs dense consciousness um just most energetics in general the harmonizer ring is actually mm, working better 
um, than the Golden Fire, in my opinion. But there's some things that the Golden Fire, like I say, with like ghosts, waywards, um, that the Golden Fire is going to be working better than the Harmonizer is. But that's it too, is that pretty much from this week on, any of the tools that we create are going to be multi-leveled in that if you get a Golden Fire generator that was made this week and later, that it is going to have available within it, it's going to have that harmonizer field available within it, as well as the Divine I Am, as well as the Chalice. It'll first and foremost be a Golden Fire generator still, but all of the other stuff is going to be like secondary. It is going to be accessible within there. And again, it's the soul that accesses that. So um, we are bringing through that those other energies now into all of the tools pretty much like the harmony generators you know that one the harmonizer energy didn't want to go into the harmony generators so the harmony generators but yet they still really wanted to carry that divine i am and the chalice energy are both in there so basically we're just we're shifting tools as we go um as well as you know again the authority templates of all the tools that we've created over the years, those are still being stepped up as well. Uh, let's see, another question. I have a cosmic sun disk and I'm waiting for the divine Taurus. How can we use it together and any differences between them? And yes, totally, totally you can use these together, the, um, the cosmic sun disk and the divine I am Taurus. Now, I have not played with them very much. You've actually only seen the extent that I've worked with these two together. Um, and it, they do feel like they amplify each other. Um, and as far as working with them together, I would, since you've worked with your, um, with your cosmic sun disc already, I would suggest when you get your divine I am Taurus, is that I would set the sun disk aside and work with your Taurus or with, work with the divine I am for a little while until you get acclimated with it and then bring them both together and, and see. I mean, if you're curious, you can certainly put them both together right away and start working with them. That's what I would do. But um, if you're curious about the difference in the feelings and the different um, things that you can perceive with the two tools, then yeah, I would try to try them out separately and then bring them together and see. Yeah, and, and sorry, I don't have a, quite enough information really on the Divine I Am Taurus yet. It's, uh, we haven't played with it enough and we really haven't asked a whole lot of questions and we're really looking forward to you guys sharing with us what you find out with them too. Um, Leon asks, have you experimented with double twisting wire? Yeah, you know, I just don't like the feel of double twisted rings. I just, eh. And maybe it is within my own belief structure, Leon, because um, when you double twist a ring, you then have four ends that need to meet up instead of just two ends. So when you, so the double twisting the wire that Leon is asking about is when you take your length of twisted wire and you take two lengths of twisted wire and then you twist them together so that instead of a single wire in here they would be twisted wire um i've never enjoyed the feel of them um but i know that you know we're all individuals and we all have things that we resonate with but it's just something that you know, i just i don't know i've just never resonated with but you know that's it was kind of like the back in the Slim Spurling days when they did everything that they could on the physical to change the output of the tools, to change the power, the potency, the way the energy flowed, um, just trying to change the tools on the physical. And to me, it's more about working on the etheric on changing the tools. So that's just where my, my path and my passion is with that, Leon. And uh, so I don't want to dissuade you from working with or creating those tools with the double twist. It's just um, not in not in my um, 
path. Um, hey, Christopher, can you please talk more about the changes with tensor technology and what you have done to make the finger rings able to work in different sizes? Um, hmm. So, no, I, I really don't know as if I can address that one, Christopher. Um, basically, it's just stepping into, actually, no, it's stepping out of old limiting beliefs and programs that are allowing us to create these better and better and higher and more expansive tools. Um, because, and that's kind of like that whole, the whole thing Leon just asked too about the double twisted wire that is within, and I recognize that that is within my belief structure that I don't believe in those tools or into using those tools for me personally. And so if that's not within my belief structure, then it's just not going to happen. Um, so for the creation of the finger rings, um you know it's just it's just gotten to the point of creating these tools that were breaking rules and i really don't want to go in publicly and talking about the rules we're breaking because mm, not everybody can break the rules and still create a functional tensor ring um so that might be a personal conversation we'll have to have. And I can tell you a little bit more about the rules we're breaking. Uh, Christine, I want to get the practitioner rings to hang from a vertical pole from separate hooks at the end of my treatment table so the client can lay in the tunnel of the harmonic creation fill trio. Do the three rings have to be spaced equally apart? And um, no, Christine, you can totally use the rings in in any fashion, whether they are all three right there on the same plane together, or else whether you have one at the foot, one in the middle, and one at the head, um, no matter what, they're all going to be working within that same field. So as long as all the columns are, are lined up there, that the person is laying right within these columns, that's all you really need. They, they don't need to be space a certain space apart or even at all they can actually all be done in that way but you know really for that harmonic creation field trio um what i've usually liked to do so if it was myself i actually would put the harmony ring at the feet because to us that is the one that is more grounding um grounding with the heart of the earth so i would put the harmony ring at the feet and the um the regeneration ring is that one that is so expansive and opening that's the one that i would put up at the top and then from there you could use the golden fire either anywhere at the top the bottom or in the middle by itself um and but yeah that's that's how i would do it what i would i would have those two rings one at the foot one at the head, and then the golden fire one you can use anywhere along that space. And you can even use that golden fire one underneath so that if you have a specific spot, like let's say in their abdomen or the heart or wherever it is that you're working, you could also just have those two at the foot and at the head. And then that other one you could actually just leave horizontally instead of vertically and move it along that space underneath of them too. So that that is another option because it will still be working as the trio, even though this other one is horizontal, their fields are all going to be connecting. Um, also, does the harmonic creation field be the best size, the largest 29 inch ring or the smallest inner ring when used together as the tunnel? And so we do have, what is it that, like with the large pyramids, um, that trio that comes with there, there's the 26 inch regeneration ring. There's a 20 inch. I don't remember if it's the 22 and the 20 inch. I always get, get mixed up whether one is the golden fire and one's the harmony. But anyway, there's a 20, 22 and a 26 inch set that you could get. And they're going to be the same power and potency. Um, 
they're they're um they'll fit around most people and they're more of a the, the smaller set is it's more easily transportable you can take it on planes things like that easier so having that smaller set the 20 the 22 and the 26 inch rings in that trio is going to be just as just as perfect as the 29 27 and 26 inch rings um I would go by what it is that you need for your physical, for the space, things like that. <clears throat> but you could totally use that 20 and 22 inch ring in place of the 27 and 29. Uh, let's see, Paul's asking, can we put a silver chalice ring in a water bottle, like a silver water ring? So the, the chalice rings, that we have are actually sterling silver. Sterling silver is like, what is it, 92% pure silver and then some copper in it. So when you put a sterling silver ring in water, it will get that green patina to it. It does slough off some of that, that copper patina when it is in the water. So traditionally what we say is no don't put the sterling silver in your water um but that's just kind of the stance that we have to to take is is just say well no it's not completely safe but you know really you can people put copper rings in their water even though we say don't put copper in your water or don't put sterling in your water you still can but we just suggest that you do muscle testing or you're asking, you're knowing every day when you go to drink your water to make sure that you are not orally ingesting too much copper into, into your body. Um, so that's the reason that we say no, not to put the sterling in the water to only use the, the 0.99 silver is because of that small amount of copper that is within the sterling silver. So with that said, yeah, totally just use your guidance and your intuition on doing so. Um, let's see. Christopher, I wore my everything ring, harmonizer ring, and chalice pendant together on a cord. It feels like a kin and next step up from the harmonic trio. Sort of like a new world trio. Can you comment on if this feels like a possible pendant combo to produce? Um, that's interesting with you know, and I'm not really sure what to say about the everything ring because that still has been one that we haven't really played with that much. Um, some people love the everything ring. Some of us just won't touch it and steer clear from it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I kind of said at one time that we weren't going to do anything else with that everything ring. But I tell you, I might still do some playing with that because it might be a, such a thing that that harmonizer ring and the chalice ring would bring a little bit of peace to that everything ring and bring through all of the peaceful aspects. Because that's the thing about the chalice harmonizer about the binary infusion pendant is that it's bringing through peace and the everything ring to a lot of us is chaos um chaos is a needed thing but i just don't like swimming in chaos all the time so i don't know i don't know what to say about um about that creation uh, Sinan, do you think to make a wand from the chalice ring? Yes, you know, I totally want to make a wand from the chalice ring, but I think what we're going to do on that, because that's something that's been very much right there at the beginning since the chalice energy came in, is how to utilize this chalice energy for, for wands. It's just that the chalice energy is not for doing. 
you can't direct the chalice energy you can't do with it so using it as a wand is very counterintuitive to what the chalice is but with that said i still think that we can anchor the columns of light using the golden fire and light wand anchor the column of light and bring through that chalice energy into that column so that chalice energy is there and available within the column and I think really what we're going to do is just do simply that. We're going to make an adjustment in the authority template of that golden fire and light wand to be able to hold that chalice energy in a light anchor. Because, yeah, I, I really feel that's, that's where we're going to go with that. Um, how does the chalice ring work with the golden white light wand compatible? <laughs> so yeah, there's another question. Perfect about using um, using the wand. So to me, when you're using that golden fire and light wand, and you create a light anchor, that the that column of light is what is holding that field for that chalice energy to come in. And so I totally want to work with that. Um, and you can go ahead and start working with that too, um, Chris, is um, anchor that column of light and then ask your soul to bring through that chalice energy or you, or you hold that chalice energy and you bring it through and you just have that intention that that column of light is holding that chalice energy. I think that's probably the way we're going to do it. I don't know if we'll actually have to do a tweak on the template or not. It might just be um, a different way that we utilize the wand that's going to make that difference for it to hold that chalice energy. Um, let's see. Do you see the ancient alien artifacts utilizing the chalice energetics? You know, I have not looked at any of the artifacts here recently um leon so i actually have a uh, what is it either two thousand or four thousand year old jade skull from mongolia sitting right over here and it's got a bubble around him because he's connected to a lot of funky stuff and um might have to actually bring that chalice energy to them and that might be what we use to to clear out those beings that are connected to those Mongolian artifacts because they're yeah, they're not the the best and brightest beings. Um, but we've never been able to clear it up until now. So that might be that might be a thing, um, Leon. To that we might work with some of the artifacts and clear them up a little bit more, connect them higher by using that chalice energy because that chalice energy does come through and clears creation that no longer serves and brings everything into its higher, higher connection. Like with water, I love using the chalice rings with my water, my tea. It, I, to me, it, it shifts the taste and feel of it a lot more. Um, let's see, Leon, could you please ask, could you please speak about when creating straight line cube, it's like the starburst. How are the authority templates anchored into the wire, especially considering the starburst is made from steel? Well, the starburst um, or the wings of talk or the key pendant, um, basically when we bring all those pieces together, we're changing the direction of flow of the piezoelectric within each of the wires, each of the, each of the pieces of steel, so that they all come into the center. So we do that with intention and then from there, it's just an intention of bringing in that authority template and anchoring it in. Um, so it, it's just as simple as an intention when you're working with the straight line cubic measures. And so like even the golden fire and light wands, when we are um, creating those, we all of us who play our part in the creation of those, whether it's the cutting of the lengths or the assembling, the drilling, the, the snapping, the bearings into place, um, even putting on the hooks. We all are in the studio. We all know what we are creating and we all help to anchor that template into the wand as we're creating it. So here at the studio, everybody who works here is taking a part 
and ensuring that those templates are anchored into those straight line measures. Well, let's see, John, with garden season up, could you talk about using tools with soil and plants? Yes, the, um, the Harmony generator, especially the seven and a half inch Harmony generator has been the most phenomenal tool for working with the soil, the plants, the, the, the divas of the earth, um, the consciousness of the plants, the, the water, the water tables, the geomagnetic lines, the, um, the soil microbes, the, um, the, the insects, the, all the animals, um, even with the elementals, the water, the air, the sun even. Um, so when you are using the Harmony Generator, it acts as an interface of what your, kind of what works with your intentions, but it, it's also working with all of that consciousness within that space, because when you put it there, it is your intention to be working with all of that within the space, the, the soil microbes, the, the everything. Um, so the, 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 Harmony generator, the seven and a half inch, is the one that we really suggest for working with agriculture gardens. Um, a lot of commercial agriculture uses those too. Um, one of the other things is the hedica. Now, the hedica, when you put a hedica in the soil, it will promote root growth 15 feet out from the hedica. So that is a phenomenal piece. And you don't have to buy the hedicas out of copper from us. You can actually make hedicas out of anything. You could even draw it on the soil with spray paint. And it is going to be bringing that energetics of the hedica, the water elemental, into the soil as well. Um, you can make them out of copper. We have a video, and there's other videos out there now, on how to make the hedicas. Um, they're simple and easy to make, and you can buy them from us too if you wish. But... Uh, but you can totally make them and they don't have to look pretty. They don't have to be at sacred measurements. You can just make a hedica, toss it in the soil, and you're doing great things. Um, so yeah, that's, that's for our plant kingdom there. Uh, Leon, have you used the chalice with charging crystals? Yeah, um, actually with working with the crystals, yes, the, the chalice has been pretty phenomenal. Um, I'm seeing that it is, it, it's just making the crystal lighter, expansive, crisper. It's, um, it's really cool. Um, see none, which ring can change the sound, the change sound most? I would suggest the harmonizer ring for working with sound. That's the one to me that I feel is going to do the most beneficial for working with sound, the carrier waves of sound. Um, yeah, because when we were working with that sound guy the other day, um, you know, he's using everything from shaman's wands to the harmonic trio, all the stuff. But to me, when I was looking at it, it that um, the harmonizer ring for working with sound, to me, feels the best. All right, so... Um, just jumping over here to chat. I'll take any last-minute questions here because I do have to run today. And, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to read all the chat here. I'll just keep you guys waiting. Um, Leon, thank you so much for jumping in and helping with questions there. I, I do trust your, your output because I trust your input. Um, let's see, in the bi-pendant, are the rings welded together or is it just the lanyard holding them? So um, in, the, um, in, the, in the binary infusion pendant, the bi-pendant, it is just held together by the lanyard. Um, and that's what we're doing to help cut down the cost too. And then plus that way you can add, um, you know, if you already have just a chalice ring, you can get the harmonizer ring to put around it too. So, and then at some point you might find that you want to take them apart and use them separately. So, unlike our other Trinity pendant that we had there, 
Well, wonderful, and thank you guys too. I again, I appreciate everybody being here today and hanging out with us. Um, and yeah, I totally encourage you guys to, if you have more questions on the tools, um, one you can feel free to always email um, info at twistedsage.com. Um, and you are also welcome to come in for our next 50 question Fridays and, and ask questions then. Let's see, next week I'll actually be in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, St. Paul area. So I will not be here for 50 question Friday. The following week, I believe we will have one. Um, so here in a couple weeks, we'll get together again. And I'm going to try to do some some different videos here over the week. And we really need to get into doing some more product webinars because we have not done product webinars for quite some time. So um, we'll start doing a little bit bit more things here too. Um, just time's been going fast, and it's been a really interesting thing here today. Um, we've really been able to work with truly bringing everything into the present moment of basically transcending time instead of working with time in its usual linear fashion. It's more like to me, it presents as almost like this wedge that comes in and that's time and it aligns time into a singularity. And when we can get to that point and hold that space of time in a singularity, true now in the moment, um, it's like time almost stops. It was really cool because this morning I was able to hold that space and from eight o'clock until nine thirty seemed to last for an eternity. I was able to do so many, so many things, stay focused. Um, that really was a cool thing. And then now all of a sudden from 10 30 to 12, 17 here, my time, time just disappeared again. It just moved so fast. So, um, anyway, a lot of good things coming right now you guys as um the messages have been to me is to be easy with yourself on all levels of um you know don't be hard on yourself if you're not connecting or if you're in the middle of some shit storm drama or whatever whatever it all is that that you don't feel is right or appropriate or whatever just realize that it's a process and don't be hard on yourself about it um because we're truly going through going through some stuff right now and it's it's beautiful so anyway all right you guys i'm gonna run so thank you again for being here and we'll talk to you soon all right take care